Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Visit the Vendor Process Training Center to enroll in your choice of 55 plus training sessions that will help you and your team avoid fraud, compliance fines, and bad vendor data. Or just sign up to get access to Vendor Process FAQs and to attend weekly drop-in live Q&A sessions. Visit training.deborahrrichardson.com today. The link will be in the show notes. Check payment fraud continues to increase and U.S. companies continue to generate checks, neither with any signs of stopping. So today we are going to talk about three types of positive pay that you can put into place with your bank to avoid check payment fraud. Also, stay on to learn how to find out what post no checks means if you don't know and how it can be used to avoid check payment fraud as well. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 255, three types of positive pay to mitigate check payment fraud. So I was reading the Association for Finance Professionals or AFP. I was reading their 2023 AFP Payment Fraud and Control Survey Report. Now, to be clear, you do have to be a member to get the comprehensive report, but I will put a link in the show notes to the highlights report and you can, uh, If you are not a member of AFP, you can go ahead and take a look at the highlights report. But in any event, I came upon the section on check fraud. And before I talk about that, I do just want to uh, clarify here who was included in this survey. And so if I take a look at the report and I go back to page 50, which I was on it, but um, the survey was sent to treasury professionals. um, So within varying job titles of treasury professionals, but they did have a total of 471 responses. And so that's where this information came from. Now, going back to the section on check fraud. Now, according to the report, even though the percentage of organizations that reported that they experienced check fraud, um, that percentage decreased from 66% in 2021 to 63% in 2022. Checks still continue to be the most vulnerable to uh, payments fraud. You just don't hear about it as much. The next highest was corporate commercial cards at 36%. And then I looked down to find the ACH credits, which are the ACHs that you push out to your vendors. Those were at 30% in 2022 which is actually an increase from 24% in 2021. So maybe that's why we hear about it more often, right? Anytime you hear about business email compromise where a froster sends an email to say, hey, change my remittance information, they're always talking about or we always hear about uh, the bank account changes. 
for either wire transfers or ACH uh, credits, the ACH payments. Wire transfers, by the way, um, are right up there with ACH credits. Um, the, oh, actually, they decreased. So in 2021, they were at 32%. And in 2022, they were at 31%. So not by much. It didn't decrease as much as the checks did, but it did uh, decrease. But the point here I want to get back to or really want to point out is that check fraud at 63%, meaning 63% of organizations in 2022 experienced check fraud, that is more than double the percent of organizations that experience uh, payment fraud via ACH credits. Um, wire transfers, for that matter, um, uh, it's more than double than that percentage as well, because ACH credits, again, were 30 percent and wire transfers were 31 percent. And that means that at least two times the number of organizations experienced check payment fraud versus the organizations that experienced ACH credit fraud or wire transfer fraud in 2022. Now, it will be interesting to see the 2023 report because many of the articles, press releases, year-to-date surveys I've seen so far in 2023 show that that check fraud is increasing. And as a matter of fact, I recently did an episode on why now, right, are check or or is check fraud increasing. So make sure you check out episode 226 on why is check fraud exploding right now. All right, so now let's talk about positive pay and the three different types of positive pay. And I want to stress that there are three different types of positive pay because my great friend Wayne Schultz of Schultz Says, uh, I had him on a recent episode, I think it was episode 252 or 253. Anyway, Wayne is a consultant that focuses on uh, serving customers that have Sage 100. So he's the guru of all things Sage 100. And he came upon this press release about check fraud, um, a successful check payment fraud, that um, the positive pay that many of his clients, or maybe that he knew many of his clients had, wouldn't have caught. And so one of the things he pointed out is that when you say positive pay, right, you just think it's positive pay. Um, Not everyone realizes that there are different types of positive pay. And so let's talk about those three types. So the first type of positive pay is Um, just that positive pay. And this means that once you have generated your checks, you will then send a file with the check information. So the check information will be the check number and the check amount. Now this file will need to be formatted based on Um, you know, your bank and whatever format they require. But what it does is if a cyber criminal tried to change the check amount, the bank would catch it because it would not match the positive pay file that you have sent. But as Wayne pointed out, here's the problem. They may not change the amount or the check number, which is what you sent they may just change the payee name. And since you didn't send that to the bank, the check will cash. Now, again, this was this came up um, because there was a press release or article out there about how uh, a check fraud was, um, was successful. And it was because the cyber criminal only changed the payee name and not the amount. And I have to tell you, when Wayne first pointed that out, I was like, what's the problem? Doesn't everyone know that 
positive pay may not include the payee name. And he pointed out that no, again, when you say positive pay, that may mean different things to different people. And it could even mean different things to different banks. So that brings us to our second type of positive pay, and that is payee positive pay. And so this time, once you generate your checks, you are going to send that same file with the check number and amount, but now include the payee name. And so what this does is if a cyber criminal tried to change the payee name, the bank would catch it because it would not match the payee name in the positive pay file. And so I thought that was a great distinction to make. And if you are using the term positive pay and assume that it includes payee positive pay, you may want to check um, with your bank, you may want to check with your IT team or whoever uh, sends or has uh, configured or formatted that pay file or that file, the positive pay file that you're sending to the bank and just make sure that from your end that you're sending the payee name and that from the bank side that you have signed up for or that you have payee positive pay and not just positive pay. Now on another note, um, I don't know what your relationship is to the bank, what your costs may be, but my assumption is that the payee positive pay may cost more than the regular positive pay. But again, that's between, you know, your relationship, you and your bank and what relationship you have. All right. So those are the first two types of positive pay. Um, regular positive pay where you're sending the check number and amount and then the payee positive pay where you add the payee or the vendor's name to it. Now, the third type of positive pay is called reverse positive pay. And this can be used if your company has a difficult time transmitting a positive pay file right in the format that your bank requires. And if for some reason that you can't do that, um, then you instead can have the bank transmit a file to your company as checks are presented for clearing. Now it could be a file. Maybe this can be, um, reviewing it online. But the point is, is that the, before those checks are paid, you have time, a specific window, maybe in the morning, most often that your company will have to compare checks that are presented for clearing to your outstanding checks. And then you let the bank know within the bank's required time period with uh, checks if any, should not be cleared. Now you can, some banks have the option that you can let the bank know that, hey, they can always pay the checks unless notified. But I would make sure that you have uh, really great controls and processes in place uh, to ensure that it's actually being checked uh, because if somebody's out, if someone else doesn't know how to do it, the fact that it won't be reviewed and the checks will be paid because the assumption would be that someone reviewed it and nothing is wrong uh, might catch you and uh, result in payment, check payment fraud. Now, another thing with reverse positive pay is that it could be a temporary solution. Um, let's say you're having a hard time transmitting the positive pay or payee positive pay file to the bank. And so in the interim, you're using reverse positive pay. Now, I'm not sure if this works with, uh, works with every bank, but check with your bank to see if that is an option if you're having issues sending uh a file with that check information in it in the format that they require.
Now, all that being said, a best practice that I am sure you have heard before somewhere, I know I've said it before, but a best practice is to have the applicable team or team member do a daily bank reconciliation. This way, any fraud or errors can be caught early. So if you are still working on the positive pay transmission file and didn't catch it with reverse positive pay, um, you will catch it with a daily bank recon. At least you have an opportunity to catch it with that daily or if you are doing a daily bank recon. This, by the way, is also a great way to catch those fraudulent uh, ACH debits. Um, some of you may call it demand debits. So those are um, vendors or organizations that you've given the authority to um, go and get money out of your bank, right? And so there have been fraud attached to that as well. So again, a best practice is to always do a daily bank reconciliation. All right, so those were the three types of positive pay. So regular positive pay with the check number and amount, payee positive pay with the check number, the amount, and the payee name, and then reverse positive pay where someone verifies uh, checks presented for clearing and confirms that they are okay to pay. Now, there is another control that you can work with your bank on, and that is called post no checks. It's really a restriction. And I talk about it in my vendor master file tip of the week that will be published on Tuesday, September 19th. And so I am recording it uh, now. And so I am going to put a link in the show notes. And I think that if you click the link, even before it's published, you're still going to be able to watch it. So you may get a sneak preview even before 919 and uh, hear all about the post no checks restriction and how that can help uh, avoid payment fraud or check payment fraud. All right. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 255th episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. Stay happy.